live action, well not the live action version, the cartoon version of this, the adult rated version of this cartoon version is amazing. I don't know which one's better, the book or the movie. I say they are pretty much even. It was like, cause uh, what can you say? It's the fucking, it's the killing joke people. It's the killing joke. It's like the one where like, you know what happens in the story. But I'm here to review this shit. So it starts out not like how in the book, cause like I got this version. I'm not sure if this is the right version. You know, like, cause it starts out as Batman going straight into the jail to interview, interrogate the Joker, finding out that it's not really him, you know, some other guy. I don't know if the other version, like the hard copy, like the comic book, not this style. I don't know if the other version had like a different version of it where like it starts out as Barbara and Batman fucking. Goes like, yeah, straight off the bat, this, this isn't a kid's movie. Cause straight out, like there's some goons rampaging through Gotham. And his truck goes over these two people that were having coffee, I guess, and you see him running. But then the truck goes over them and you don't see him anymore after that. So I'm guessing those fuckers got killed right there. So right off the bat, people are dying in this shit. So we got Barbara Gordon wanting more, I guess. Cause like, it's like almost like a Disney princess, always wanting more. And having a big ass crush on Bruce Wayne. I mean Batman. Or Bruce. I don't know if like they she knows if Bruce is Batman yet. Cause like later on she knows, but in this movie it has never really got told. I don't know, it's been a while since I read this book. Does it really does she know that Batman is Bruce Wayne? But yeah, this is an amazing book. So yeah. Barbara is basically crushing on Batman. And we got this guy named Paris France, France, whatever. This cocky motherfucker who has like a hot, uh, who has like a fucking boner for Batgirl. Hey, I don't blame him. It's Batgirl, man. What did you have a boner for Batgirl? <laughs> I love how he gets some prostitutes and makes them want one of them wear like a mask and it has red hair. It was hilarious to me. But Paris France, this motherfucker, takes out his own uncle. That's how much he doesn't give a shit. But yeah, enough of that storyline. Like, yeah, they got to the point where like Batgirl and Batman are like arguing with each other on top of a roof. And right there I'm thinking like, oh my God, just why don't you just fuck him? Then five seconds later, they actually do. I'm like, well, this shit went kinky. <laughs> and then it turned into like a soap opera high school thing. Like, is that, a, is that an invitation that you want me to go over there? Like, bitch, it's your job to be there or something. I don't know felt like really high school-esque. And I love how she said, it's just sex, who gives a fuck? <laughs> this coming from a girl that's making a big deal out of everything. But yeah, then she quits, and then we get into the main story where this thing starts off with. Let me just say, I was kinda like, there was an impending doom there. Barbara and Commissioner Gordon at home, spending quality time. Then you hear the doorbell ring and I'm going like, no, Barbara, don't open the door. Don't open the door. It's like something on, like, off Murray, like, hey, don't open, not, not Murray, like, scary movie, you know, where like black people yell at the screen, <laughs> how they make fun of that. It's like, bitch, get out, he's right behind the door. I was like, that's like, no, Barbara, don't answer the door. But then she answered it, it's like slow motion. And she gets shot. Yeah, that was intense. So yeah, then we get to the carnival. I gotta say, the midgets in this thing. On paper, they look scary. But watching it all, all fuck, right in front of your eyes, cartoon wise, it's rough outright traumatizing man god damn like the freaks of the circus all there that two-headed woman just scared the shit out of me then you got the fat guy the skinny guy the wolf man everybody came out but yeah commissioner gordon for all the shit he went through holy crap and then came the scene you all know the scene yeah that scene let me give you a reenactment of what I was doing as soon as that scene was happening.
On paper, in this comic, it was something to see. Because, goddamn, you don't see that, like, your own father looking at your own daughter naked, tied and bound, and, like, shot there. And the Joker taking pictures and spreading her over places where, like, a naked Commissioner Gordon is just sitting there looking at all this, and he can't do anything. But watching this, while it's happening, fuck. It still lived up to that scene. It still did his job. Kudos to Commissioner Gordon for all the shit that he went through. He still wants to get Joker by the book. Imagine that. Of all the shit he went through, seeing his daughter get paralyzed, shot, and all that fuckery. And still wanting to do the whole justice system the right way. That's how much you know Commissioner Gordon is by the book. God damn, I don't know how I could have done it, but this is Commissioner Gordon. I don't know who else, anybody else could do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like the backstory of how the Joker became Joker is pretty cool to see on screen. Where he like falls into the vat with the red hood thing on. And as soon as he started laughing like the Joker laugh, the infamous Joker laugh was like, holy shit, no wonder I'm scared of this guy. And the one guy in the movie is like, hey, I mean, we may be scared of you, Batman, but we're terrified of him. It's so fucking true. Because Joker is terrifying. Holy crap. But yeah. Man, this movie just gets you. It just gets you. And I love it how it ends the same way as the comic where, like, the two are like, oh, well, before the, the thing happens, like, the two are having a regular conversation, like, come with me, you need to stop this. And, like, Joker, for once, is not playing any games and, like, actually talks to him like a human being. He's like, no, it's too late for me, blah, blah, blah. And then he tells that joke, which I still don't understand, like, uh, I'm still trying to understand that joke, I, which I, ah, so sue me, I don't understand the joke. And they're both laughing, and it ends just like that, because you don't know what the hell is going to happen next, because, like, is Joker going to do something, is Batman finally going to kill him, because he goes, like, we're going to wind up doing something to each other one of these days. But who knows what happened, but I like how they ended it like that. Also, Kevin Conroy back as the voice of Batman. How can you not get Kevin Conroy? It'd be a sin not to get Kevin Conroy, although they do get other actors, voice actors to play Batman, but Kevin Conroy is the best. And Mark Hamill is back as a Joker. Man, Mark Hamill must play every Joker out there while voice acting, because he is the Joker. Sure, they can get other people, but no one, no one can do the Joker justice. The voice, the voice of Joker will always be Mark Hamill. Hands fucking down. Well, that's my review for you guys. Go watch the movie if you haven't seen it, but you've seen this already. And if you haven't seen this, why are you watching this anyway? Because I'll put spoilers in the title. So it's your, your own fault if you watch this without watching the movie. Unless you read the book and you're wondering how the movie is. So that makes sense. But yeah, that's it for now for my review. Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye!